just have to share my life story to the youth who think there is no hope. There is hope. If a poor son Kwame in Japan today stand before all of you, then you, at the age between 20 and 26, that you are in this university or institution, I share with you and encourage you that you will do better than me because I never went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. I think at that, that portion they were referring to my good friend Kwame Japan. I went to university at the age of 33 after driving taxi, working at gas station, bakery, I decided to go to university. And the reason was that in 1992, I sponsored Professor Edubwai, myself, Dr. Preku, and my boss, lawyer Kwejua from Mesiru, when in his house at airport. And he, he was sure that he was going to win. So he was forming his cabinet. And at that age, I had contributed immensely towards his campaign. So I was thinking, at least, I'll be made a deputy minister. <laughs> and in his room, I saw the list. I didn't know the man is a prophet or was a prophet then. I took offense. That is why I went to university. Because Professor Edubuahi tapped me here, said, young man, you're going to be a good businessman. I didn't understand. I thought maybe that time I had not gone to university and just a Swiss former, maybe I didn't qualify to be a minister. Not knowing he saw something in me. I wish today is alive for him to see that young man he tapped, he showed us that time. So after struggling in 1992, and we lost the election, I decided to go to school, Fordham University. And even that, when I was at Fordham University, I had over $1 million in my account at a great bank in Ghana here. And my business, as you grow and come up, or my colleagues here that are into business will tell you, the level of dishonesty in this country when you are doing business. In my absence, those I left behind collapsed my business, and I had to leave. So I stopped the school, the third year, going to fourth year at 3.8, and twice appearing on American Who is Who, I left. And I remember my dean, Professor Houston, calling my house, telling my wife to convince me to come back to school. Another thing that inspired me to stop the school was that my professor, economic professor, introduced me to a company called Smith Bank. Uh, that was Solomon and Solomon, today Smith Bank. And they agreed with me, the third year student, to pay me $120,000 then. Myself and one colleague, may he so rest in peace, Atta from Atrinsia who also got opportunity to work with AT&T. Atta was 120 and they offered me 89 until I finished. So I went back home and asked my wife, so you mean after going to school all this while, I'll come back home with 89,000 and even minus Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam is the tax you have to pay. So I'm not going to take home 89,000. At the same time, prof, my business was collapsing. So I was in a crossroad, whether to finish or leave and go and do my business. If I had completed Fordham University, I would have been in jail. You know why? 
because I introduced the U.S. lottery first in Ghana here. And my workers were collecting $5,000, giving receipts in my company name and depositing the money into their own accounts. And they could not even deliver the purpose why the people paid the 5000 So I was owing a lot. And therefore, if I had continued to the final year, one year, God knows how much I'll be <laughs> in debt I will be. So I decided to come home. And young men and women listening to me, honesty pays. I came back, all the money that they've collected, I had to refund the money from the money that I had saved with that Greek bank to have my peace. Today, I tell you, all of them are dead broke because of dishonesty. They are all dead broke. And I have survived because of honesty. I am interested in the youth because I've realized in this country, politics especially, is dividing this country. Politics is dividing this country. And as a result, I see young men and women coming to me with their applications looking for jobs. And I will start by saying that the students here take your destiny into your own hands and sky will be the limit. Government cannot employ all students, 100,000 students graduating every year. Don't expect that government, no country, that the government employs almost all the students or the labor force. I believe government has to do its part. Government has to be responsible by creating an enabling environment for conducive businesses, I mean, conducive environment for people, entrepreneurs to take over and also create jobs to employ or absorb the students that come out of college. In Ghana, we have about 900,000 government employees. And we have over five, six million young men and women, the labor force I'm talking about, looking for jobs. So if you want to succeed in life, today, use me as an example. Now, the poor soul that was born in Asin Dompil, I carried my chop box and trunk for Masim Fosu to Atsadi College, Cape Coast, today, because we have good road, it's 45 minutes. Now, Prof, that time, it took about four hours from Masim Fosu to Cape Coast. I got there, my hair was brown, my face was brown, everything. When I say brown, you understand, dust. A senior looked at me and called me, hey, come here. What is your name? Say, Kwame in Japan. Where are you from? I seen Dumpim. And he stared at me. Where is I seen Dumpim? Say somewhere. <laughs> Say a fum. A fum. <laughs> you know. When you look at my trunk and chop box, it was painted with dust. But we survived. We survived with perseverance. You now you see what we call Dadama. Some of the students, Saturday days, I remember very well. Some, in fact, when I was in London about two years ago, a friend of mine confessed to me that he was going to chase a girl in Wesley Girls and he had to go and borrow a spotless white shirt from one of our classmates. <laughs> I could not. In the first place, I seen Dumpin English and Wesley Girls English. <laughs> you, can, you can imagine. <laughs> They would not even look at you. So I was always sticking to my books, chewing baba. Because the English, sometimes 
from that village, you don't even understand. <laughs> but you have to chew and pour. I could memorize it and give you ditto ditto. In fact, Macbeth, I can tell you, from at one C1 all the way to the end, it is when I went to university, then I could understood what I was actually chewing in at the college. But I chewed to pass, you know. With all this, you see friends, weekends, I will not mention names, it's not nice. They will come with their parents, luxury cars, and I remember one of them, he will put the car on reverse, and he says, attention please, this car is coming back. Attention please, this car is coming back. And we all go and surround the car, looking at the, you know, today when we see him. <laughs> you know, it's hard work, trust me. I'm giving you all these references for you to know that there is hope if you take your destiny into your own hands and work hard. You can't sleep. You can't rely on government for everything. You can't rely on Kenya Japan for everything. You have to start something. Last week, we were at a funeral, and my good friend, His Excellency, was telling me, oh, as for the PK, you were lying. And I had to demonstrate to him. I had it on a plate, a bigger one. We have PK here, Tatra blade here, Nazareth is also a blade, rub, and chocolate. So I'm going to Mr. Bryan's place. I'll show you. Yes, PK, chocolate, Tatra, Nazareth, yes, rub. <laughs> you know. And on vacation, I'll go to the airport and we sell you my PK and I'll see my classmates going to London. But one day I came back and told my mother, I'm not going to sell the PK again because God doesn't like me. Not knowing God was preparing me for a place better than that. With that hardship and endurance, that is why I'm here today. And therefore, young men and women, never be solely headed that you've been to university and therefore your success is determined. It is not true. You have to work at it. And if you want to succeed in life, first thing in life is honesty. You have to be honest. A lot of people, when they are given opportunity, they try to steal, they try to be this. The dishonest ones, it doesn't end well for them. So key to success, the first thing is honesty. Second, hard work. I hope you are taking notes because those who think at the end of your education you're going to be rich because you have a degree from UPS, it's not true. Education will help you to analyze your expenditure, the revenue coming in, and all those things. But if you are not honest in your dealings, I'm afraid you will not succeed. If you are not hardworking, you will not succeed. Hard work in terms of what? Before I bought the taxis that they were talking about, I was working at the gas station and at the same time, bakery. Zaro bakery. Zaro bakery, 40 hours, I was making $120 a week, take home. And my rent was $432. So if I'm earning 480 and I don't have extra job, I'll be left with what? About $48. So I had to do extra job by taking another job at Gasseteria gas station. And there, Monday, eight hours, Tuesday, eight hours, Wednesday, eight hours, Thursday, eight hours, Friday, eight hours. 
Saturday 24 hours, Sunday 24 hours, making 88 hours a week, plus the Zaro Bakery 40 hours a week, making 128 hours a week, and I was earning $400 a week, a guy without green card. That time, those with green card and American passports or American citizens, they will go to Ward of Astoria or Hemsley Place, do their eight hours, come back for their Core 45 or Old English, and they will be enjoying themselves. That time, I'll be working. Through that, I bought my first taxi, and every day, I saved $100. 30 days, $3,000, I'll go to New Jersey and buy an old car, either Caprice or Impala, Chevy Caprice or Chevy, Chevy Impala. Then I'll go to my insurance company, insured it, and partition. You partition it because if you don't take time, somebody will give you a shot and that's it, you are dead. So I partition the taxi with insurance registration on the road and they pay $40 a day. No excuse. If my car breaks down, bring it to me, let me take to the mechanic. If you take it to the mechanic, I'm afraid I'm not going to accept it. I'll take my $40. In seven months, I had eight taxis. Eight. So I was making $380 a day. Because I make 100, the seven taxis give me 280. I bought my first out at East Ligon, 17th April 1988. I was 28 years. I bought that for my parents when they were sacked from Flagstar House. The Jubilee House now was for army officers, the W's. That's where my parents were staying. My stepfather couldn't build, so they moved them, pushed their things outside. Fortunately for me, Azuma Nelson came to America with his coach, uh, managers. So I pleaded with them. I gave them the first 16,000. In fact, they looked for the property for my parents to move in. Then I gave the balance. And that time, at age 28, at the same time, in 1988, I bought my first house in America, 624 Commonwealth Avenue. And the down payment was $69,000 at that time. And the, the cost of the property was 220. I remember Chase Bank. They were talking to me on the phone. He could tell from my deep accent and look at the paper, the age was 28. He asked me, are you an African? I said, yes. Where are you from? Ghana. What work do you do? I said, I drive taxi. And we are buying this house? I said, yes. That is 28. My house was just next to Jennifer Lopez's parents. That was 622. They were in 622 Commonwealth Avenue, and I was in 624 Commonwealth Avenue. It went on and on and on. Here we are today. So that poor boy, they were calling a foam when I, I raised my hands to answer questions. All the students would turn and look at me because I was the tallest and the oldest. I went to school at the uh, secondary school at the age of 16, whilst Gatti Sams and the rest were age 10 and 11. So when I raised my hands to answer a question, they all turned. Kwame e Japan, Anu Blofu Chebe. You know, uh, today, they are proud of me. My classmates are really proud of me, and I thank them for that. <laughs> so, Kwame Japan, a foam, a new bluff, whichever. Look at the people here, just paying attention just to listen to me. Trust me, you can do it, and do it better. It's just determination. You have to think big, dream big, talk big. Because in our society, when you dream big, your friends will tell, oh, this guy, he's too new. He talks too big. He can't do it. Never keep, I'm giving you my strategy. Never keep things to yourself. Tell the deputy minister sitting here that I can a Japan. I'm going to build a 45-bedroom house and read my lips. I'll build it. 
But the moment you tell her, if you are not able to do it, you have failed. So by telling her or telling a second person becomes a challenge to you. And you have to fulfill all the things that you have said that you're going to do it. So tell somebody that one day I will be somebody. And you will be somebody if you are determined. Say after me, one day, one day, I will be somebody. I will be somebody. Tell your friend, one day, one day, I will be somebody. And you will. You will. Don't give up in life at all. Whatever challenges you are going through today, turn all your negatives to be positive by enduring the challenges and standing up to the challenges. It is not going to be smooth. Life, what I call life and success, is like multitudinous in Cardinal. Multitudinous in Canada. It's like weights. It goes up, and it comes down, and it goes up. If you go up and come down, you better get up, boy. If you don't get up, that's the end of you. But when you get down, it's the experience. When you get up again, you don't want to come down because when you were there, the terrible things you went through becomes a lesson to you. Friends that you buy beer for them to drink, when you get broke, the things they will say about you all becomes a lesson that you will not want to get to that level again. And when you begin, you begin to think positively like that, trust me, you're going to succeed. And all those friends who were laughing at you, one day you invite them again. But you tell them to their face, you. I will tell you straight away, you know, whatever you said about me 10 years ago when I was broke, I know. But eat, drink, and go. But you have taught me a lesson. That is why I've succeeded. So life is how you make it. Nobody can do it for you. See, I always tell my children that I may there one day, and when I'm dead and gone, because you did not go through the hardships I went through, you might not be able to sustain the wealth I've left behind. So I'm teaching them. I teach them the hard way. You make a mistake, you're out. One strike, you're out. Oh, fortunately for me, I have many children. So, parable of the sower. Some will fall on the wayside. Others will germinate. Then you move on. I'm inculcating discipline into them. I don't want them to be solely headed like those kids who were driving their father's cars. Attention, please. This car is coming back. You know, my son is here. We went to Dubai. He used his own money to buy his second car. I said, good. As my brother came to me and said, oh, this is your Mercedes that you are not using. Why don't you give it to your son? I said, you see, you are older than me, but I have to tell you, you are foolish. You are foolish. That is why all your children have not succeeded. I should give my S class to my son. When he graduated, honorable, the same school with you were that's where he did his masters. Well, I bought him a first car. And his second car, he has to work and buy it himself. My brother was telling me, oh, give him your Mercedes S500. I said, me? S500? I was carrying water 6 a.m. in the morning. And he got the first car. I mean, I wore shoe at the age of 16. 16 when I was going to secondary school. Even that, I had some severe beatings from my father. Because I didn't know he was going to London that time. And that time, you didn't need a visa. You only need money. And that poor teacher, I don't know, he didn't have money. He went and he was deported. So he, he brought his hunger. <laughs> 
Batukubasere. <laughs> and were children of teachers. That time, all my friends, their parents have bought them shoes. So when you go to their house, then they'll go and bring the shoe. This is what my father bought me. That time, my father probably was in London airport being deported. <laughs> I didn't know. So when he came and I said, I want a shoe, I remember very well. Kumasi Home Stores. That was the first time they opened Kumasi Home Stores. He went there, we couldn't get the shoe. And I said, I won't go home. So they convinced me to go home in a week later. I had severe beatings and they took me to a, my village. When my auntie saw the clothes I was wearing, he asked me, what's your problem? Ah, I can't take this. Straight, he put me in a train, slipper, from Takuradi to Accra, to my mother. When my mother saw me, she asked, what is wrong with you? She said, I want shoe. And she started crying. That's it. That's all. And there's a shop opposite her place, Sika Ufie. So he went there and bought me my first shoe when I was going to Adesado College. So now you, you finish university, you have your own car. You spoil the car, you want me to buy you another one. Wow, it won't happen. We went to Dubai, he came to me, oh, daddy, I bought a car. Now he's so chisel, he doesn't want to spend it. You see, he doesn't want to spend his money. First, at ease. Oh, daddy, then they'll be doing this. One day, he was arrested by the police. They called me from America. Hey, my father is Kenya Japanese and that. They called me. I said, huh, yes, let me talk to the police officer. The police officer explained to me. I said, I'll lock him up. <laughs> they lock him. My friend had to beg me for three hours. I said, no, I just turned off my phone. So I don't know how he got out. See, this is how, this is how I trained my kids. And now he's doing very well. See, they have organized these beautiful things here. I say thank you to Kenneth and Safo and Oman FM, Kent City Media. You guys have done very well. So youth, in this country, we are rich. We can be successful. But we need to take our destiny into our own hands. Let us challenge ourselves as human beings. And we can do it. Now, all of you are going to check singing and chanting for God to give you what? Wealth. God is listening to everybody in the world. All the people are chanting. Are you the only person chanting? No. He has given us brains. If God wanted us to chant 24 hours, he would have created us just like animals and these bears flying all over the place. They don't plant anything. They go there, they eat, and they go to bed. God has created us as superior human beings. Wake up in the morning and ask yourself, ask God, is that the image of you? You said you've created me in your own image. So I want to know God if this is the image of you in me, then show me the way also to make it in life. <clears throat> Challenge the odds, the superstition. When you start business, it's not going to be easy. Problems are going to come. Challenges are going to come. But strike hard when the iron is hot. And don't rely on any pastor for your destiny. The moment you go to the pastor, I have uh, our reverend here. We had a fantastic program before I left for Dubai. The moment you go, you, you, he knows that you are vulnerable. So they begin to put fear in you. You give it to them. By the time you realize you are broke, and if you doubt me, when you go to the churches, you will go to church seven days in a week, 365 days in a week. The very day I go to the church, 
they, I'll be giving the front pew. Because they know Kenya Japan has come today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I went to Methodist Church at Kokomlemli, my mother's church, before she died. I went there and the, pastor, uh, the priest said, Oh, and Nadia Kenya Japan, I bet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when they were giving their collection or whatever they call, they started from 10,000. So I gave a check, 10,000 CDs. Then it came to 5,000, and one co woman gave it. The rest, they couldn't, then they came to 500, 200, they were clapping. Saw a lot of people coming out with their two CDs, and the whole church was quiet. One CD, quiet. 50 persons, quiet. Okay. Then, chairman of the occasion, I had to talk. And I said, I'm very, very disappointed in Methodist Church. And because of your behavior today, I won't go to Methodist Church again. <laughs> because the first time I entered here, you said, oh, today, can I Japan buy a year? But I see that old lady coming with one CD with joy in her face. God will bless her more than me. But you didn't say thank you to them. So he said, oh, we apologize. Let us clap for those who brought one CD. <laughs> my, mother, my mother swore never to invite me again. <laughs> You know, so my reference is that all of you that go to church 24 7, I go once a year when I'm invited. When I go there, I'll be given the best seat because I've worked hard. And that day, all the 365 days collection you've given to the church, I can give two times more than that. And therefore, I'll be given the best place. So, why can't you be? one of those guys who can also go there and give the best offering. You can only do that when you work hard. So please, let's take our destiny into our own hands. There is no witch anywhere. When you fail in life, then you attribute it to your grandmother. You fail in life, you attribute it to your father. When you were smoking jar, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, today, I'm, a morning chore, uh, this. Was your grandmother there? Was he there? When you were stealing from your boss and you got fired, was your grandmother there? So please, I don't believe in those things. No witches in the way. And come God, the way I run my mouth. If indeed there's witches that you, you claim to be, where will I be? No. You just have to take your destiny into your own hands. Challenge yourself. I'm doing what I'm doing today. I went to 37 military hospital and I said, I'm going to build ultra modern cardiothoracic center for Ghana. I was yearning to do this because we have to prove to Guyanians and ourselves that we can make it without a white man. Let's challenge ourselves that we can do it. I went there, the architect brought a design and he said 45 bedroom. How much? Two million dollars. I started laughing. <laughs> said that's all. Kolebu, what is the size of the cardio directory center there? He said 30 beds. Say double it. Or give me two and a half size of that. So today, I cut a sword for 80 beds. I've given them a deposit. And I have one year to pay $3 million to finish the project with the equipment. And trust me, I'm going to do it. And I'll do it. Doctors. They crack their brains, work steady, 
and they don't pay them well. They wanted just $11,000 to go for training for six months to come and man this facility. And they don't have 11000 For one year, seven doctors can afford $11,000 each. I calculate this 11,000 times 7 is 77. I say, I'll give you 100,000. Put the rest for allowance. I got this inspiration from a family. When my father was sick and admitted at St. Barnabas Hospital in New Jersey, whilst he was in the room, I was reading what is on the board. And the story goes like a couple husband and wife, built the whole hospital, although they've expanded it, they built the whole hospital for even me or I, the African, has benefited from there. So why can't I do the same for my country? I'm doing this for my country. No politics. NDC MPP, CPP, we are all bogus. We are all bogus. We are polarizing the country. And it's about time that we speak and criticize ourselves. And make sure we change the destiny of the youth of this country. I live for you. So live for your brother too. That's the only way we can change this the destiny of this country. Talking plenty, criticizing good things being done in this country, you get your opponent to turn it around and destroy the good intention of whatever you want to do. That must stop and move this country. I'm setting the pace and challenge for you, the youth, that if that poor boy from Asin Dompim has done it, you can do it better. If that poor boy who could not speak English, anytime you raise your hand, a new bluff, hey, today I raised three million dollars at ease. A PK seller and a graduate lucky, you would do far better than me. So you should have hope. You should have hope. That the future will be bright. You are not going to be like this for the rest of your life. If you work hard, you don't cheat people. I tell the guys all the time that look, even when you are in the mood of having sex with your wife, a call will come. Can I Japan? Your money is ready. I say, honey, you got, you got away, baby. I got to take that money. When I come back, fresh mind, good heart, I give you good sex. So you have to marry your job. That is what I mean. Marry your job. And your wife and family will be happy. And some of you will tell you, oh, <clears throat> Okay, my wife and the family are home. I have to go home. When there's money to be made, I quit Jimmy. <laughs> Just pick a phone. Honey, you know what? I got some deal on the table here. Let me finish before. I'm going to be late for an hour or two. Finish the deal. You go home. Money is on the table. When I catch you, I say, oh, don't go. Sikasu kakra. When money is on the table, I've seen a nice lady who had come to complain to me that she is getting divorced. Why? Said the husband cannot take care of the family. I said, Wow, sky moja mbao. Oh, Joanna Kachua, so money is not anything. Wanna catch you? Read Ecclesiastes 10 19. It says, Food is for laughter, wine is for merrymaking, and money answers it all. When you do that, you work out, you make the money, you go to church on Sunday, you also give some to God. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm not against worshiping. No. Any man who says there's no God, to me, you are a fool. If you don't, you want to know God, just sleep. When you are tired and you sleep, ask yourself, when you were asleep, where were you? That body that is talking to everybody here, I go to bed and I'm nobody. That alone tells me there's a superior being. A superior being that I don't know is God, whatever you call it. So I believe in God. But I don't want to be over-reliant on God for everything. That is the problem I have in this country. We are over-reliant on God for everything. The white man brought this Christianity. Go to Germany and check how many people go to church. Go to England, check. Go to U.S., check. And we are always in the church. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my house in Tema. Monday, I'll see, especially the ladies. I'm going to my site as early as five. The school filled. I said, gee. So I was with a Chinese lady, and she asked me, what are they saying? I said, well, <laughs> I explained to her what they were doing. I said, oh, so you think uh, Satan is only in Ghana? <laughs> so they want to arrest the Satan here. Satan will not be in China or what? You see, simple breakdown of your stupidity. The day God rested, he said, he created this world with six days and the seventh day he rested. Yes. So he can go to church. If you are SDA Saturday, if you are Methodist or whatever, Sunday, no problem. But seven days, ladies and gentlemen, trust me, you're not going to make it. I'm sorry my good friend is here, but he is open-minded because he's finance guru. He understands. He got the calling to serve the Lord. That is why he is different. And he understands my angle where I am coming from. A lot of these pastors, I'll give you an example. Obinim is not, is not my enemy. My stepfather and Obinim's father are from the same family. They are first cousins. The question I ask, I'll go to the funeral. I'll go, because my stepfather says we should go. I'll go. But the question is, why is it that if Obinim has powers, his father was dying and he couldn't heal him, but when you are sick, he says he can heal you. You are stupid. <laughs> very, very stupid. If charity begins at home, if he has that powers to heal you, let him heal his father first. As simple as that. So please, I am not against God, but I I'm worshiping hard work. I'm sitting here, what the VC said, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor said, took my mind off the thinking. I was thinking, if you observe, I was touching here, touching, plants look dorsal. <laughs> but when Pro Vice started talking, I was paying attention and I forgot about whatever I was thinking. You have to think, plan your life, how you are going to make it. And trust me, you will make it too. God that you worship will not let your toy be in vain. You will make it. So as a country, I am interested in the youth because you are the future of this country. My uncle, who was a village king, meaning in terms of education, he attended just commercial school and working at Ghana Commercial Bank. We visited his house. He was heavily drunk. His wife was so beautiful, very nice. But he sucked from his house. He did not see the future in us. I took three of his kids to America. I took three of his kids to America. That is why I have faith in the youth. That time I was young. 
he did not think through it. He could not foresee that one day this young man can be somebody. That is why I'm interested in the youth, sharing my experience with you. That you can make it in life. You just have to be determined. Work hard. You have to be sincere in your dealings with your superiors. They'll call you names. They discourage you. Just be a fool for a while. And you will be leading a leader of the wise men. Be a fool for a while in any institution that you are. Eventually, you'll be rewarded by your hard work and your foolishness as they perceive you to be. And you, the fool, will rule the wise people because of their dishonesty. So please, it is not by magic that you are here listening to me. I'm sharing my experience with you to encourage you that there is light. Honorable, is it under the tunnel or it should be straight? <laughs> we all have future. We should know how to manage our life to bring out the gift that God has given us, the talent that God has given us. If you sit at one place and rely on God to do everything for you, you will fail. I use the Bible again, the last one, and I'm done. The parable of the talent. The significance of that parable of the talent is that God helped those who help themselves. One day I was listening to a debate between Kwesi Pratt and Kweku Bakun, and Kweku Bakun said in the Bible, it says God help those who help themselves. And Kwesi Pratt said there is nowhere in the Bible that says God help the, those who help themselves. I said Kwesi Pratt, he doesn't know the Bible. He has a literal meaning. If you're a theologian and you read and know the significance of that parable, it says the rich man was traveling and he gave his three servants money. When he came back and asked the first one, so I was afraid. So I hid it. He said, give it to me. The second one, they asked him, what did you do? Oh, I managed, I got this profit. Hold on. The third one, yes, what did you do? I doubled the money you gave me. The Bible says, the one who was afraid of his boss or master, he took the money and shared it. The word is proportionately, not equally. He shared it among the two, proportionately. And when the children will say, and expect manna to come from heaven. So you have to work 24-7 and turn your life around. And when God sees that seriousness in you, he will uplift you and you will be the shine and the glory of God to the rest of the people. As you are celebrating me today, ladies and gentlemen, the youth of this country, let's take our destiny into our own hands. Don't rely on government for everything. Don't rely on your parents for everything. For now you are matured. Go out there. Any job, any job that will sustain you, put your education aside, take it, work. And because you are educated, you'll be able to analyze your situation better than those of our parents who could not get the opportunity to go to school. That is the essence of education. It is important. But if you say that, oh, I'm a graduate, there's no job. Ah, why should I take this job? I'm not going to do it. Uh, you chew your certificate. Yeah, but when you start small, when you start small, you will get there. If you are lucky also to get employed, what you have to do is prove yourself to your bosses. Let them know. What you don't know, feel free to ask how it is done can tell you a story, you won't believe it, a whole human being did that. I gave a scholarship to three kids in my constituency. And I wanted to give them exposure. The guy was in my office as a secretary, 
trying to help me call his secretary. One day, I drank coffee and there were stains in my cup. I asked the guy to go and clean the cup. I don't know what happened to me. I entered the bathroom and he was using the toilet brush. I swear to God, cleaning my cup. That is how dumb he was. But I forgave him because of where I picked him. I said, I'm going to change this guy. I'm going to change this guy. I sat him down, explained to him, this is for toilet. This is for the cup. Today, he's a graduate working. He calls me from time to time. Oh, honorable, my friend, I'm saying, how are you doing? What did you learn from me? So I've learned a lot. Yes. That time, if I had been mad and said I'd get out from my office, I would have done a disservice to that young man because he was innocently ignorant. Not that deliberately he used the toilet brush to clean my cup. So this is how bad some of us from the rural areas we encounter challenges. We are not exposed to a lot of things. So you getting the opportunity to come to university, trust me, you can do better than Kenny Japan. You can also do worse than Kenny Japan. When you become solely headed, yeah, I'm the graduate from UPSA. I don't, I don't want this job. Uh, I graduated in business administration. <laughs> By the time you realize I'm selling Bruni Wewu in bills, I'll be selling Bruni Wewu in wholesale, wholesale level. And you still be holding your certificate, BA administration or whatever, BSc. So if you complete your education, you look for job, and you don't have anything, try and do something. Even a kiosk. Put your certificate aside. Build the kiosk. Build the business. And one day, you'll be a big businessman and employ your classmates who wanted to be employed by government. When I was leaving Fordham University, I'm going to end here. Apparently, my wife, she was not happy the fact that I was a cis former and all her family, they are graduates, R.P. Buffalo's family, they are graduates. So one day, I came to Ghana and my resource went home in America. She took it and opened it. Then I had five days from that semester and she had told all her cousins. So anybody who calls me, say, oh, congratulations, then I ask, Congratulations for that. What? Oh, you had five days. Say, ah, is that why you're congratulating me? So all along, you ladies thought I'm dumb. <laughs> Here. So when I was leaving the school and the dean called my wife to talk to me, I said to her, beautiful lady, Madame Ajwa Fritzwa Stella, Wilson a Japan. I want to assure you. I want to assure you that I don't have a degree, but one day I'll employ PhDs, masters, PAs to work for me. And I have done exactly that. I have done exactly that. So trust me, the youth. You can do it. You are the future of this country. Work hard. Be honest. Save money. Today, all the girls are looking at you. So you are solely headed. Go and re uh, watch this movie, Scarface. They were two friends, political refugees in Cuba. When they went to America, one was so handsome, wherever he goes, chasing the girls. And he told him, a friend told him, 
That's Al Pacino. He said, we are political refugees from Cuba. You first have to make the money. When you have the money, you have the power. When you have the power, you have the women. And all those who are borrowing shares to go to Wesley Girls, the girls don't even want to see them. On my phone, I don't talk. Ladies, I don't know. I call her, we met you, your boy, when she and baby are rats. Or a pummy. So the time that we are going to spend on women, the time that we are going to spend on men, concentrate on your education. A time will come that the prettiest woman will bring her application. A time will come the richest man will come to you because you have sacrificed your time, a better use of your time in college. And your reward will not be in vain. But if you spend all your time chasing girls, women, men, young men, trust me, you waste your time. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added unto thee. On earth, seek ye first capital, and the rest shall follow. <laughs> On this note, I want to end here and say a big thank you to all of you for listening to my nonsense. God bless all of you.